What is he reading in there? What the hell is he reading in there? Hello, I'm Small Request and welcome to my book club. The first book that we have in our rotation is by Mark C. Danielewski and it's called The Familiar One Rainy Day in May Here it says it's from the author of House of Leaves and House of Leaves is one of my favorite books of all time it's interesting how it can make everything look so weird for the readers it has hundreds upon hundreds of footnotes Half of them are factual and half of them are fiction. And the story branches and goes layer beneath layer, like the movie Inception. Mark Danielewski is from California. And I believe now he lives in New York. And this book, well, what can I say? I've read um, 200 pages and still I have no clue. What it's about. So let's take a small peek at what's inside. Kids, man, they never know when they are. You can already see that it's not your normal book. But let me start by reading this first page for you. From the author of the international bestseller House of Leaves and National Book Award nominated only Revolutions comes a monumental new novel as dazzling as it is riveting. The familiar volume one ranges from Mexico to Southeast Asia, from Venice, Italy, to Venice, California, with nine lives hanging in the balance, each called upon to make a terrifying choice. They include a therapist in training grappling with daughters as demanding as her patients, an ambitious East LA gang member contracted for violence, Two scientists in Morpha, Texas, on the run from an organization powerful beyond imagining. Plus, a recovering addict imagining. No, no. A recovering addict in Singapore, summoned at midnight by a desperate billionaire. And a programmer near Silicon Beach, who 
whose game engine might unleash consequences far exceeding the entertainment he intends. At the very heart, though, is a 12-year-old girl named Xanther, who one rainy day in May sets out with her father to get a dog, only to end up trying to save a creature as fragile as it is dangerous, which will change not only her life and the life of those who has yet to encounter, but this world too, or at least the world we think we know and the future we take for granted. Are you excited yet? Well... Like it says, it's volume one. This came a month ago or so. And the author has already written ten of the volumes. And there will be 27 volumes. The House of Leaves has been said to be like a movie of the books. And this is definitely going to be like the TV show of the books. From these first pages you can see how Danielewski uses typography to tell different stories. For example, these here say how many raindrops, how many raindrops. And it's the girl Xanther looking outside a car window and just thinking these funny questions asking herself how many raindrops there are and the way they are flowing and falling from the window Let's move to another story. All these different chapters are written in different fonts and with different layouts. And they all have a meaning behind the story. In this chapter there was some Chinese as well as Russian texts all over, so it was pretty hard to read. This orb chapter, it tells in a very interesting way how the characters that are in the story have an interesting intricate orb with them you can see it starting from here 
and page by page it goes more to the middle and here it's crossing the pages right from the center fold There's also a lot of nice visual images to go with the story. Here the page is only this long and it's done by the way that the police reports are because this chapter is about a police officer. And now we have already passed the point that's where I am in the book. Every chapter begins with a weird quote, for example this is from Tupac and it says this is what it sounds like. And it's very weird to see this kind of pop culture reference in Danielewski's books. Also, some of these markings say that where the characters are, for example here it says Los Angeles, California, and every chapter happens in one rainy day in May. And from what I've heard, it's hard to decipher this story without having to read them, without reading them all. So it's gonna be a long journey to get into this story. And the way it's written is not your usual. Sometimes it is very hard to keep track on what you have just actually read. The characters are just thinking about stuff. It's all written down like a flow. But I like how all these chapters are color created and also the font is same with the same characters. So you get that kind of feeling that you actually know what you're reading and it gives it some kind of consistency throughout the book and it has a lot of jargon from coding to street lingo and stuff and I heard that Mark Danielewski went to speak with gang members to know how they would talk and to a prostitute to know how they would react to si different situations and as well as he uh, he stayed on a police department for a while 
to get a good feeling on how police officers are in actual life. So he does a lot of research with his books, but also he requires from the readers a lot of research as well. So I would recommend this book to everyone who has a little bit of Sherlock in themselves because this is the type of book that needs a lot of close detail investigation and I'm sure that there's already for example on reddit a lot of threads about what's happening in the book and I think it's fantastic so I could maybe read a little snippet for you to hear how this actually sounds Let's just start from here. Dangerous, Anwar asked, pausing at the piano. This was a few weeks ago. Because they cause you discomfort of or pain? Kinda, Xanther had shrugged. Like holes in the ground, or the water. Water, like earthquakes and whirlpools. Like what's underneath just, you know, falls away. Like Ketchum. What's Ketchum? When the earth just opens up. Chasm. Like a chasm I fall into. And then her mom had interrupted, getting down on her knees, putting her hands on Santa's shoulders and taking the conversation away. Is this really about questions, Xanther, or is it about what happened in December, in front of the coffin? A few days later, though, Anwar brought up the dangerous versus smart thing. Xanther tried something else. They uneasy me. Uneasy you? Like, they give an answer that doesn't just create one or two more questions, but like, forest of them. Xanther still had paper napkin on which Anwar had drawn out seven numeric impossibilities. He called them indeterminate forms. Supposedly, these seven formulas had very tricky or, as Anwar had put it, dangerous consequences. And here they are. On the back of the napkin, Anwar had written down the zero divided by zero fallacy. One times zero equals zero, and two times zero equals zero. Therefore, one times zero equals two times zero. Divide both sides by zero, and what you get? One equals two. So there's a lot of that inside, but that was one of the most easy reading parts so far and I've heard that it goes beyond, for example, Finnegan's Wake, which is notorious for being a hard one.
hard one to read. I can't really talk much more about this book just because the way it is and how I haven't read it all yet. But I'm intrigued on what's happening in the book and also I want to pay respect for the publisher to actually agree on something as big as this. It's not that usual to get a 27 book series basically done already and then one by one getting released in this beautiful way so Pantheon really did a nice job with the layout and also the publishing and I've heard that there's going to be some kind of ebooks of this as well with some interesting new visuals and maybe some hints on how to open this story when I was reading House of Leaves I got a very very strong visual feeling and I do hope that they will make a movie out of it and if that one works out maybe they would do a movie or a TV series out of this I would see something in the lines of True Detective working here but that's about it and until next time you will choose the book next week, okay? Have a good sleep and bye bye.